for? We're getting a 16-year-old gunshot wound to the abdomen. He's got a low blood pressure, and they'll be here in just a couple minutes. And that's all the information that we have. We want to give you something that you'll remember for a long, long time, maybe even as long as you live. Oh, oh, ah. We're going to try to show you what really happens. But in order to do that, you have to know a little bit about what's going on in here. So after it's in, we blow up the balloon so you can't pull it back out. It kind of locks it in. And then it's got the two little holes on the end that, will, that you can get the urine out through and you can check it out. How far do we go up? Uh, all the way. Boy, I have to go all the way in there? All the way. <laughs> oh. Okay. You'll see on this side of the room you a number of people in white coats who will be working with them quite a bit. Uh, these are some of our medical students who will be taking you around the hospital and, and showing you around. Once we've gone through that, that uh, lecture format and we've given them the basics at least on the screen, then we give them some hands-on experience. Each kid is assigned one of four roles, so they can either be the team leader, they can be a, what's called a trauma one or trauma two, and that just describes their position in the room, or they can be the person who controls the airway. You just kind of hold it above their face like this. That way the oxygen comes down, they can breathe, and you can understand what they're saying. Okay. It costs about $100 to $125 per person to do it, which is fairly expensive. It is resource intensive. It takes a lot of people from uh, paramedics to nurses and real doctors um, and a, a slew of hospital personnel to put the thing on. And that's why we are trying to be as selective as we are in finding kids who will benefit from it the most and are who are the most at risk. When did you first get involved with guns? I was about 12. When you were 12? That's when did it. you find a gun when you were 13? My dad had it. It was a shotgun. I, I cut a half, um, cut off shotgun. Generally, their uh, kids are uh, around 15 and a half years old. They have uh, come from the Ramsey County Juvenile Court for a criminal offense. And that could be anything from a violation of probation to um, a drive-by shooting. We was on our way to the movies and we be carrying guns with us. And I shot myself, that's why I'm in there. And I got caught with a gun too. So that's like my second gun case. We uh, are very fortunate right now to have a guest speaker who was paralyzed about 19 years ago by a gunshot. Oh, my name is Glenn King. I'm what you call a C7 quadriplegic. And he gives them some very real examples of what it's like to have been shot and have that devastating an injury but not die from it. I was shot a day for my 18th birthday and I've been in a wheelchair ever since. Quite a few of my friends are either still water or in the grave. And everything that you do wrong, it comes back to get you sooner or later. After that, we have a, what we call a pretest, and it's really a survey where we give to the kids so that we can measure what they think about guns and gun violence before the fact, before they see the rest of the program. Once they've had plenty of time to finish, then um, we page them out of the survey. And we've been fortunate to have a video that's been developed for this that plays in the background that looks like a uh, just normal daytime programming on television. But at the appropriate time, at the end of the session, it switches to a news flash done by uh, local news personalities. And they actually set up our scenario for us. Don, I'm standing on the basketball court at the West 7th Community Center where the shooting took place just moments ago. There were many teenagers who were witnesses to the shooting, several of them friends of the victim. And here's what the scene was like just moments after the shooting. The basketball court was chaos as paramedics struggled to stabilize the victim, a 16-year-old boy fighting for his life. At least a dozen teenagers witnessed this shooting, many of them friends of the victim. Were they facing each other? They, they were facing, he, he, was, he was about to run as soon as he saw the gun. Witnesses say the two young men were arguing when one pulled out a gun and fired. Now we do not know his condition at this time, although we understand that he was shot several times, possibly in the chest. He's being taken to St. Paul Ramsey Medical Center. We'll have more information on his condition as it becomes available. Don, back to you. That's the yeah, Low blood pressure, and they'll be here in just a couple minutes. That's all the information that we have. Okay, good. We'll be ready here in about 
45 seconds or so. Okay, everybody in their spots, quick. <clears throat> and I need to get some gloves. Let's go, everybody right here. Come on. Get those gloves on. All right. Okay. First, you're gonna ask the nurse for those. Okay, there's your nurse. Who's okay. two? Who's two? We will need to get an x-ray at some point. So there's the x-ray machine. We do have the tech here. So she'll be right in whenever we need her. We got a little view boss back here where we can put it up so we can see it. We always put these paper clips on so that we can find it when we see the x-ray because they don't show up. The, the holes themselves don't show up. Okay, all you need to do is stand down here with me while they start calling you and they ought to be here any second. Just work with us, do your stuff here and uh, we'll, I hear him, I hear him. Pretty bad, Doc. He's got a gunshot wound in the belly. Okay. Gonna be able to get any information that's in here. Okay. Found him down. Did I help move him over? Courage, one county. Well, wait, wait, wait till they call. Ready? He's freaking out too. He's freaking out. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Everybody, start doing your stuff. Start doing your thing here. Okay. Everybody's doing their stuff here. Okay. Okay. How you doing? Talk to him. Talk louder. Okay. He's talking. Tell your team leader. Got your hair. Got your blood pressure. Okay. Airways open. Seems to be breathing okay, although he's got a lot of stuff coming out of his mouth. That may be a problem later. Commoners. How much fluid do we have in? We have two liters. Two down. liters? Okay, good. That's about how much we want. We usually run in two of those bags of fluid there. Should be going up with that fluid. Okay. Who's his doctor? Oh, going up there, going up and see uh, Duke up there. Okay, let's get x ray real quick. Shoot it and get it right back to us. Go down. Starting to go down. Starting. He's not moving either. He's, not moving. He's, he's slowing down. Give me that x ray real quick, okay? He's not really moving. What's his pressure? Losing his pulse. Losing his pulse? Here's our x ray here. What do we got? Uh, look at this. Look at this. There's our, there's our marker there. He's got a bullet right up against his spine. It looks like it hit him right in the back. That's why he's not moving. Okay. Let's roll him quick. He's not moving very much. Gotta come up and take a look. Okay, let's see it here. That's where that one came out. There's a wound right there. How's his pupil? Did you say he was blown? He's got a blown pupil? Wait, 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 wait. What's that? What's that? What's that? He's got another one. We missed it. Oh man. Okay, flip him back. Flip him back. You can see where that one came through some. He had part of that come out. What? Do we have anything now? He's not moving at all. Check his pulse. Check, check, check his pulse. pressure. Check his pulse. He's flatlined right now. No, he's got no pulse. All right. All right. No Listen. He's got a blown pupil. He's got. That means he's got a terrible brain injury. We can't do anything with this. We can't get this kid back. He's just pronounced him 1045, and let's just cover him. That's it. We can't. We can't get this kid back. His family is here, and they want to know what's going on. Oh man. Okay, let's get him covered up here. Um, all right, everybody, let's get our stuff off here. Okay, we had we had the one obvious injury here, and <laughs> that wasn't the one that was doing all the damage. The problem was the one in the back of his head. Um, so let's well, let's all go talk to the families. Just put your put your stuff in here. Gloves go in here, and gowns in the in the tank there. Uh, do we have a chaplain? I'm here. Okay, great. Which room are they in? They're in room two. Okay. You all need to go in. All right. Right in here. All right. Hi there. Hi. Uh, I'm Dr. McGonigal. I'm one of the trauma surgeons here. These are some people who have been working with me. Uh, um, we were working on Colton just now, mm -hmm. and he came in in very critical condition, um, and we did everything we could, but we couldn't save him, and he died. What? what happened? Saying I'm what? sorry, he died. What happened? <laughs> what happened? Here, Chachi can kind of fill you in on some of this, because we're working together here. The, the actors that come in act exactly like r the real victims that we take care of, and when we go talk to the families, they practically bring tears to your eyes. It is so real, and, and I can vouch for him having to have done that tens and probably hundreds of times already. It's about as real as you can get. We've had people just flat out start crying, you know, after this. Um, 
we've also had p- girls just go ahead and flip and flash back into you know their own situation, their own life. So it does affect them. And from there, they immediately go to a, a set of counselors. Usually it's one of our counselors plus some of the teachers or staff from the program that the kids have come here from. A lot of them will begin to tell their own stories, uh, uh, stories of either being involved with gun violence somehow or having friends or family members being victims of gun violence. And they all of a sudden are sharing thoughts and feelings that maybe they haven't told to a whole lot of people before this and they're beginning to start to think about how their decisions will not only affect them but may affect a lot of other people and that they really have some responsibility about those things. No, I always remember it. Because what happened, how I'm going to think about it, how the family going to react and all this, and how we can settle it better than taking it to the violence. Two weeks after the program, roughly, we go to the program where the kids are from and we sit down with them as a group and we administer another survey so that we can see how their thoughts, their attitudes and beliefs about gun violence have changed from the pretest that we gave them to now. I mean, you knew before you got there that it wasn't yeah. real, but when you get into doing it, it, it kind of makes you forget that it's not real. Yeah, it's the family, the way they was acting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have never seen kids come back and talk about it as much uh, and be as, as uh, taken by it as they were. Having a person come crying and yelling at you and you don't know what to do and you just get scared and be like, man, please, please let something happen. Please let them come back alive or something. Do you think the same way about the subject as before the program? Not really. Because I wouldn't even want to be in that position by getting shot. How do you avoid it? Mm-hmm. Just put the guns down and stuff. Handle like gentlemen. Talk it out, son. Instead of shooting each other, killing each other. I ain't gonna deal with a gun no more. I said that once before. This time I mean. I, I seen what happened.